All right, so welcome to our Unit 3 Banking. Uh, we will have three sections of notes in this unit, and our first unit, is, our first section is learning about the different depository institutions in which you can um, use for putting your funds in. So what are depository institutions? Those are businesses that are going to offer you multiple services, banking and cert finance. Uh, they're going to be banks, such as commercial banks, savings and loans, credit unions, um, they are regulated by the Federal Reserve or some other state and federal agency. So once again, our three depository institutions where you guys can deposit your funds are your commercial banks, credit unions, and savings and loans. First one is commercial banks. Their primary characteristics, those features that are different from other institutions are that they are the largest depository institution, meaning that there are more commercial banks than they are any other financial institution, as well as because they manage business finances as well as con uh, con household finances, um, there are the largest amount of deposits that are deposited within those institutions. Um, they're considered full service depository institutions, meaning you can have a checking account, a savings account, loans, credit cards, trust funds, um, open up safety deposit boxes, you can exchange your money for foreign currency, um, you can make investments, maybe like a retirement account, like an IRA, um, or other financial counseling advice. Um, they also have a variety of different um, consumers, personal use as well as business use. So business customers can use a commercial bank as well as households. Uh, examples of commercial banks are going to be locally and regionally. we got Pulaski, Eagle Bank, and FCB, which is Fair City, Fairmont City Bank. And then you have your national banks like Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, Chase Bank, um, and they offer investment services as well. Advantages of commercial banks are that they're convenient. Um, they have multiple locations uh, because they're for profit. Um, they're multiple locations locally and or nationally. So if you have a, an account at a commercial bank here in St. Louis and you go off to college, uh, the likelihood that they may have that commercial bank in your college town is very high, as well as maybe if you're traveling and you need to get access to your funds at your local bank, um, they may have more locations in cities that you might be traveling to, as well as they have a wide variety of services to meet individual needs. You can do online banking, you can have mobile banking, um, as well as many of the other features that we addressed in the very first section. Uh, they're updated on the most current banking trends, so they were the first ones to do online banking as well as the first one to use mobile banking. And they are FDIC insured up to $250,000 per account. Uh, FDIC stands for Federal uh, Depository Ins Insurance Corporation. Um, it's a federal government agency that insures commercial banks and savings and loans against loss. The disadvantages of commercial banks is because they are for profit, interest rates on interest bearing accounts like savings accounts may be lower than credit unions and interest rates on loans may be higher than other credit unions because they are to make profits off of the loans that they um, provide for its consumers. And then there's maybe more fees or more expensive fees associated with the services uh, than other institutions. A credit union. Their primary character characteristics, they're non-for-profit. They're a cooperative depository institution um, that's owned by its members who share a common bond. That bond might be based on zip codes, so living in the same community. Uh, maybe it's the same employer, so through your work, or they may be religious-based. So an example of some credit unions that we have in our own community, our first community, uh, Anheuser-Busch Credit Union, and then Christian Community. The advantages of credit unions are that the interest rates on interest bearing accounts are going to be higher than those of commercial banks because they're not out to make money off of you. They're out to share the profits with its shareholders. Um, interest rates on loans are going to tend to be lower than commercial banks. Because there's a common affiliation um, with the members of that credit union, there may be more personalization. And then once again, they are insured up to $250,000 through the NCUIA, which is the National Credit Union Association. The disadvantages are because credit unions are not for profit, there's not going to be as many locations. And because they're based on specific zip codes or common affiliations, there's just not a lot of extra monies to put a lot of locations out there. Um, as well as and they, um, because they don't have a lot of research and development because of main, uh, retained profits, uh, they don't have as many services maybe as uh, commercial banks. But they do the basic. The, the lending, the saving, the checking accounts, the debit cards, credit cards, those things are all very similar. 
uh, and they're slower to stay updated on trends in banking. Um, I've been able to do online banking through my credit union for quite a few years, um, but they weren't the first ones to jump into it, but they were also not the first ones to make mistakes with it. Same thing with mobile banking. So savings and loan associations um, are uh, generally locally owned and privately managed, but they're home financial institutions. Um, it receives its individual savings and uses those funds to make long-term loans to home purchasers. It makes loans for um, construction, purchase, repair, or refinancing of homes, and it is state federally charted, state or federally charted. Examples um, are going to be American Federal Savings Bank or Ozark. Um, federal savings and um, there's just not as many of these because many commercial banks as well as credit unions have taken on the same responsibilities as savings and loans uh, through deregulation in the 90s and the thousands so the advantages of using a home a savings and loan are that they focus on mortgage lending and have experts to assist in this process so you can still get home loans to the other financial institutions but these guys are professionals they're experts in it their interest rates on um, interest-bearing accounts are going to be higher than those of commercial banks, and their loans are going to be loan rates are going to be lower than commercial banks, and they are FDIC insured. The disadvantages are that there's fewer locations. We have very few in the Missouri area. Fewer services are provided because they focus strictly on um, the mortgage lending process and may not meet all your banking needs. And then finally, we've got a brokerage firm, which is not a depository institution, but it's a place to grow your investments. So business, uh, primary characteristics of a brokerage firm is that they're businesses whose main responsibility is to accept trades from buyers and sellers on stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and other types of investments. Brokerage companies are paid a commission after the transaction has been successfully completed, and they may provide investment advice for wealth planning, such as college funds, retirement savings, and estate plannings for a fee. Some examples of some brokerage firms that we have in the St. Louis area would be Edward Jones, Wachovia, and then Morgan Stanley. Advantages of brokerage firms is they you can receive advice on growing your wealth. Uh, they are experts in this and they all have the higher education in the area of finance and investing and they have special training in the areas of investing. Buys and sells investment options so they can actually take care of those trades for you when you want to grow your wealth or start investing in uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and they're experts educated in wealth planning and investing. So they're there to help project for you based on your lifestyle goals um, what you need to have for your retirement or for your educational needs or for um, marriage needs and such. Uh, disadvantages are that they're not FDIC insured, so when you invest with them you are risking your money. Uh, you pay for the service or the advice, so none of that is for free, and they provide fewer banking services. So that culminates what our four institutions are, and next we're going to learn how does the Federal Reserve determine um, the actions of our banking institutions.